In this tutorial we're going to be using Sonic Pi to compose our very own song using code. Now the song we're making today is made up of three different parts. We've got a piano section, a bass guitar section and a drum section. I'll just give you a listen to what the song sounds like. Alrighty, so that's it. A quick 20 second song is what we will be doing. In this first part of the tutorial today, I'm going to be showing you how to create the piano section. Then I'm going to stop the video and come back in a second tutorial that will show you how to do the bass. And then in the final video, I'm going to show you how to add the drums into our track. Okay, so let's get started today by heading over to Sonic Pi. And I need you to start with a blank page. So if there's any writing on your page, just highlight it and delete it. And what we are going to do first of all is we're going to play the D chord. Okay, to play a chord in Sonic Pi, it's quite simple. You just need to write the word play, and then you put a space and write the word chord. Then in brackets, we need to tell it what chord we want to play. Okay, so in brackets, put a space and a colon, and I want you to write D5. So we are playing the D chord, but for this song, I want to go up an octave. Okay, so that's why I've added the 5 in at the end there. It's just going to make it a little bit higher pitched. Okay, and once we've got D5 written in, we'll put a comma, space, colon, and then write the word major. So it's a D5 major chord that we are playing first up. You can close your brackets there, and press run and have a listen to that. Okay, you should just hear a pretty high pitched beep. Okay, we're going to play the D5 major chord three times, and we're going to do a 0.25 sleep between each one, so a quick quarter of a second rest between each chord. So I'm going to copy that just by highlighting it and pressing Control C, and I'm going to paste it in two more times. So when we run that now, we should hear three beeps. Okay, um, I just realized that this second chord is actually a little bit too um, quick. So I'm going to change the sleep to 0.5 there. So we've got a little bit more of a gap between the second and the third beep. That's better. Alrighty, so that's our D chord all done. We're going to do a very similar kind of thing for the next chord. Okay, so we're going to type in play again and write in chord. And this time, oops, I don't need the antivirus software. All right, we're going to play the chord A major. So we just write in A, put a comma, and another colon, write major, and close it off. So this time, we're playing the A major chord. Okay, simple. In between each of the A major chords, we're going to have a half a second rest. And we're just going to play it twice. So I'm going to copy that code, paste it in one more time. Play that and have a listen. Alright, that's sounding good. On our next chord now, which is going to be the G major chord, so I'm sure you can write this yourself now. We're just going to play chord, in brackets put a colon and the G chord. Make it a major by putting a colon and writing major, and closing off your brackets. The sleep time between the G major chords is 0 0.5. Oops, that should be on another line. And you can copy that, and paste it in one more time. To finish off, we're just going to play the A chord one more time, so we'll just write in play chord, in brackets, A, and then major. Oops. And after that we're going to sleep it for one second. So let's have a listen to how our song is sounding at the moment. Beautiful. Okay, so that's sounding pretty good. Um, what we want to do now is repeat this three times. So I'm going to go back to the top of my code here and on line number one to repeat something we create a loop. Okay, and the way we create a loop in Sonic Pi is we simply write in the number of times we want to repeat something. So I'm going to write three and put a full stop and write times. That's pretty straightforward. It's almost plain English. So three dot times and then we put a space and write the word do. Okay, and after the word do we basically tell the computer what we want to do. So we're going to play all of these chords here and when you've finished your loop, you just write end at the bottom. 
So what happens is it plays all of these chords once. Okay, and it hits the end. It comes all the way back up the top. And it says, oh, okay, I've stood a couple more times. I need to play that. So it will play it two more times. And once it's finished playing this section of code three times, it will jump out of the loop and it will come down here and it will start looking for the next line of code to run. Okay, we will have some more code down here later, but for now, that's all we're going to do in this tutorial. Okay, so let's have a listen to see if that's repeating three times. Yep, that's sounding really good. Okay, the other thing I might do up above this is change the sound from that beep to a piano sound. Okay, and the way we do that, we simply write use underscore synth, put a space and a colon, and write in piano. And that will change the sound from a beep to a piano. Alright, so that's sounding really good. Okay, so we've got the first part of the piano done. Repeats three times, sounds awesome. Coming in below that, we're going to speed it up and just change the sound of our piano a little bit. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to play the G major chord again. So just put in play chord and write in the G major like you've done before. Okay, so there we go. Play chord, we've got the G and it's going to be a major. And we're going to sleep it for a quarter of a second, so 0.25. Now, that's going to play it once. I want to play it eight times in a row, so that's going to happen pretty quickly. So we need to make another loop. All right, so above that play G major chord there, we write down how many times we want to loop this piece of code. So we write eight dot times. Then we write the word do. Okay, so we're going to do this section of code then we're going to end it. So write the word end at the bottom. Now that's going to repeat that eight times. Okay, so if we just, well, we'll play it in a minute because I've got to add one more, little bit of code and then we'll um, have a listen to how that sounds. Because after we do this G major chord eight times, we're going to play the A major chord eight times. So I might actually copy and paste that bit of code and just change the G to an A. Everything else is the same. We're going to play the A major chord with a quarter of a second rest between each one, and we're going to do it eight times. Okay, so let's um, have a listen. Oh, actually, no, sorry. One more chord I want to add in. Okay, when we finish the piano, we just want to end up on the D5 major chord. So just type in play chord and add in for me D5 major. And that will be it. Okay, so now we can play it and have a listen. I'll just zoom out a bit so we can see all of that code. One more time. Down here. Here. Beautiful. Okay, so that is the basis of our song right there. What I'm going to do now is just add in a few comments to my code. Okay, now if you don't know what comments are, comments are just plain simple English. It's not actually code, and the computer doesn't actually read it. It's just in your code to make it easier to read. There's someone who's looking at your code trying to make sense of it. So we put a hashtag in first of all, and what I'm going to do is write in piano. Okay, and that's basically saying this section up here is the piano. Coming in below that, when we get into the faster bit of the piano, I put another comment in and just write faster piano. And that'll probably do us. Okay, just a couple of very simple comments explain what's going on in our code. For people that don't understand code or other programs that come in to read your code, they'll find these comments very useful. Okay, if they're looking for the faster piano section, they're going to say, oh yeah, there it is right there. And they'll be able to go and work on that section straight away without having to traipse through the code trying to find it themselves. All right, so I might save up here. This is the piano section all done. Okay, so just hit the save button up the top. I'm just going to call mine song and I'll save it in my appropriate folder. Okay, I'll come back in the next video and I'll show you how to do the bass line.